Hey guys, it's Jackie from Homeschool Hangout by Nerd Family. And today we're going to talk about HSLDA. What is it? Why would you want to join it? Do you have to join it? Is it a big deal? We're going to cover some of those things. If you like these kinds of videos, do me a favor. Thumbs up, subscribe, comment. Come see me over in the Homeschool Hangout by Nerd Family Facebook group. Find me in Nerd Family on Twitter and Facebook or Nerd Mom on Twitter. Just chat with me. But let's get into it. Okay, HSLDA is a group that stands for Homeschool Defense Legal Association, HSL. No, I always do that backwards too. HS, Homeschool L Legal Defense Association. When I started homeschooling, it was a really big deal that you had to belong to it in order to participate in a lot of things. And what do I mean by that? to join a support group, to join a co-op, to join a lot of things, they would actually require that you were an active member of HSLDA. Why? You hear legal. Is it lawyer insurance? No, it is not legal insurance. Legal insurance is illegal, but it is a group that legally defends homeschooling across the nation. That can be on the personal level and just Full disclosure, I have been a member since my oldest child was, I believe, in first grade, and we are actually lifetime members, which meant we paid one big thing and we don't ever have to pay again. We'll get into what that means later. Um, so I'm pro HSLDA on the whole. But what does it mean? It means if personally, if you have an issue with homeschooling, let's say your child is graduating and wants to join a police academy. This is something I believe that was happening in Alaska, maybe. Alaska wasn't recognizing the legally allowed high school diploma of a student. and was saying like, no, sorry, we can't let you in. Well, you call up HSLDA and they will help you walk through, possibly giving you form letters, possibly connecting you with a local Alaska attorney to go deal with that. You're like, great, Jackie, I'm not in Alaska. A uh, situation I saw here, because I refer people to HSLDA all the time. I had a friend who had a child with a man she wasn't married to. She was married to another man and had another child. And she wanted to take her daughter out of public school. And she didn't know what her rights as single parent, as half of a parenting unit, were as far as that went. What did she need to give to her, her ex? What needed to happen? And she hopped on that day, joined. Basically, they have a certain amount of free advice they'll give you. And to get past that and to actually, she started working with an attorney here in California. She became a member. She did the Rush membership. And they helped her transition through that whole situation. And I believe they maybe even connected her with a really great family attorney here locally. That's one of the reasons that you have it personally. The line used to be, if Child Protective Services comes to your door, you don't have to let them in because they don't have a right to come in. But what you do is you close that door and you immediately call HSLDA. And they'll, they'll help you walk through that. So from a personal level, it's nice to always have that protection there just in case you need it. From other ways, you are financially supporting the people who go through and legally support your rights to homeschool. So that, I've never needed them from a legal standpoint, but I don't feel like my money has been wasted. It's nice to have that safety net, but they do. They go through and they help with California homeschool laws. They help with all of these. And one of the reasons this is important is there was a time not too terribly long ago that homeschooling was not legal in all 50 states. I'm not even sure if it's legal in all 50 states now, but it wasn't legal in lots of states. HSLDA was formed to help with some of that. But when you hear these rumors of, oh, California is not going to allow homeschooling anymore, I don't listen to the rumor mill. I go to a couple different homeschooling groups and say, okay, what is the law? And then I go to the state um, legislative record myself. Um, it's nice to know that they're in there and they are helping you fight for this thing that you believe in. Um, I have in front of me details. So how much does it cost to join HSLDA. It costs, you've got some options, $12 a month, $125 a year for an auto renew annual membership. For a non auto renew, meaning I'm just gonna write you a check, it's $130. Or the lifetime membership is now $1,200. 
I'll admit, I've been homeschooling a long time. It was $100 for a yearly and 1000 for a lifetime when I joined. So it does go up, which makes sense. That was seriously 13 years ago. So that you can also get some discounts. And the discounts are offered if you're a full-time pastor, if you're a full-time missionary, if you're military or first responder, police, EMT, fire, or if you're a member of an HSLDA discount group. And when I say that, here locally, Cheffa is an HSL, HSLDA discount group. Say that 10 times fast. So you can get $15 off your annual membership. And that's great. Your lifetime membership comes with a couple of caveats. And what that means is if you put all your children back in public school for a year and then pull them out the next year, it used to be, and I believe it still is, that negates your lifetime membership. If you want to come back to HSLDA, you'll have to start over. The nice thing about lifetime membership is it doesn't matter how many years you're in, meaning I come from a family that the kids are 16 years apart. My husband comes from a family where they're 20 years apart. If my mother-in-law had started homeschooling in the beginning, she can homeschool through all the children she has. No matter how many she has, no matter how many years that is, your lifetime membership covers that. And that was kind of the factor for us. We have four children, six years apart. So that's 18 years of homeschooling. That's how we came up with that number um, to justify it for us. So they talk about what the specific benefits for membership are. And one of the things that I love about HSLDA, and when I talk about having that safety net there, they have a 24-7 hotline that you can call as a member. Yeah, seriously. If I and, and it doesn't have to be I need legal help. It could be one of the things that I keep pointing people to HSLDA for is I don't know what my rights are for special needs in California. Because in case you don't know this, your IEP isn't necessarily tied to your school. Your IEP, which is your um, individual education plan for a special needs child that can legally have certain benefits like certain therapies and certain things like that, is tied to the state. Now, sometimes it can be tied to the school because the services are provided only in the school. So you might have to take your kid to a school. But I don't know what your rights are on that. They also provide... Um, a lot of different resources. So if you want to know how to do a transcript or how to get your kid into the military, before my son went to the army, I did go and look and say, okay, one, I looked at the military site. What do I need to give you? But then I went over to HSLDA and I went, okay, what kind of problems do people have in the military? Come to find out it was smooth as silk for us. And that is another video I have been asked to make. I just haven't made it yet. I kind of feel bad. It was so easy. I don't know that it even deserves a video. Yeah, it was that easy. Um, but you can go to the HSLDA to be equipped to be forewarned to look at all their information. If you are moving, HSLDA is great because it can help connect you with um, resources and requirements in that state. Because homeschooling really, really does look different state to state. I was talking to a girlfriend in Alabama whose kids are all in virtual learning who's homeschooled before, but it's not now. And we were, I'm her business coach. And so I was like, okay, so for your time, you've got the kids at home and not able to work. Would it be easier for you to just homeschool? Because here in California, it's easier to homeschool than it is to jump through a lot of the hoops that people are doing with virtual learning. And she's like, in, in Alabama, you have to give the state all of your lesson plans and have it all written out and have certain things and then get them approved. I'm like, Oh my goodness. Okay, so for her, she has found that distance learning is going to be much more time efficient for her. And it's the path she's choosing to go on for right now. But I understand that. I heard a rumor that in Maryland, they come into your home and watch you teach and evaluate if you're good enough to homeschool. Yeah, there's a list I have of states I would never want to move to as a homeschooler. It's my little back pocket. I learned that from a friend who was in the military and they were looking at different places to go. Um. One of the other areas that HSLDA is really good for, and we talked about the police academy, is just kind of how to take your homeschool education and get it accepted in the adult grown-up world. In reality, it's not hard to get it accepted. It's not hard to go to a university. It's not hard to do any of that. But every once in a while, something pops up, and HSLDA is there. And when I say that, let's say you go through all 12 years, and you're like, Jackie, this is great, but I... I don't need to take a gamble. I need my money. I don't need to take a gamble. Well, if something crops up, there's a decent chance that you can just pay that year, 
pay a $40, I think it's $40 for a rush application, and they'll still help you. In reality, they help things that help homeschooling, regardless of whether or not you're a member. So if you're having a problem with the university, there's a good chance that if they can help with that situation, it will help other homeschoolers in their entire homeschool community. So HSLDA doesn't just take the cases or become involved in cases that are just for their members. Sometimes they do these things or help advocate for laws that are just good for the homeschool community. So the next question, who is eligible for membership? You need to homeschool or intend to homeschool at least one child. So in theory, I didn't join until my oldest child was in first grade and we were legally homeschooling. I could have joined the day I got pregnant with him. I could have joined before I got pregnant with him because I always intended on homeschooling. You can even join to support this, this organization if all your kids have graduated and you just believe in homeschooling and you want to help HSLDA because your money actually helps fund the lawyers and the time they put in. And it's, it's a nonprofit. You're, you're supporting a nonprofit more than you're even getting benefits out of membership. Um, if your kids are too young for a formal program of education, so in other words, your kids are in preschool, all that good stuff, you qualify. You have kids enrolled in a private school, but want to support homeschooling, you can still join as a full member. It's, it's, they're in private school, meaning they are not in public school. If all your kids are in public school, meaning you've got three kids in charter and you homeschool one, you can become a member. But if all your kids are in charter school, you can donate money through their homeschool freedom fund, but you can't become a member because you're involved in the public school. That's just the deal. But if you have no children, you can become a member. If you live in another country or a citizen of another country, but meet one of those other things, you can become a member. The only people who really can't become members are people who exclusively public school their children. That's it. That's it. You do get some other little like discounts. I believe there's like an Office Max printing discount, which can be kind of nice. It was used for the robotics team many times, but that's about it. That's what HSLDA is. I fully support it. I am so glad that there are legal and political advocates out there um, lobbying and taking things to court to benefit homeschooling. I appreciate it. They separately have a PAC. This is not a PAC. This is not a lobbying body, but it is a legally active body and they do separately have all that other stuff. They also have things like Generation Joshua, which is a program to get kids involved in politics and government, but those are separate um, memberships and separate things, but they do all spring out of HSLDA. What did I not tell you that you want to know? Maybe I know it, maybe I don't know it, but I can find out for you. Let me know down in the bottom. Make sure you let me know what you thought of this video and I'll talk to you all later. Bye.